Right as we started, it had it. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is Ryan Leslie Flattery, and this is the Unbreakable Podcast. Good to see you. Glad you're hearing us. Uh, however, you're viewing this either on the YouTube channel or through the podcast, wherever you picked them up at, um, uh, through PodPoint, iHeart, iTunes, wherever. Just glad you're listening and paying attention. Uh, here we are, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's March. It's March. Yay! Woo! -woo! Yay! Spring is just around the corner. At least they tell me that. So we'll see. It's a beautiful day to start March. It's a beautiful day. And it's coming in like a lamb. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it won't go out as a lamb. That's we're right. praying for that, right? Yes. Um, but we're coming to you today to celebrate sowing seeds. Um, because March is all, you know, we're, we're Illinois people. Um, and even if we're not living in Illinois, we're still Illinois people. So. Uh, we've grown up all our lives watching the farmers prepare yeah. the, the the ground, mm -hmm. and it usually starts in March. And as early as they can get it in there, they'll do it. Uh, just depends on how the how wet it is, how mm -hmm. not it is, you know, mm -hmm. all that. But anyway, it's sowing seed season in in the Midwest in places that plant. And that's mm -hmm. what happens in the spring. We sow yeah. the seed with an expectation of harvest, right. but we sow the seed. So we want to talk to you about sowing seed um, into your family, into right. your marriage. Mm -hmm. And so today on, on this particular podcast, we want to talk to you about sowing seed into your family. Um, and how do you do that? How do you sow seed into your family? Any thoughts? <laughs> of course I have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, family is um, very important yeah. uh, to all of our lives. It's a, it's a great blessing and reward. And when we're sowing seed into our family, that means we're going to reap more rewards. Um, one of the first places that we always look to sow seed in our children is in the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so from the time they're little, we um, started praying over them. We started singing over them. We started encouraging them to sing with us. Yeah. To um, and you know you just start with like Sunday school songs. You start with the B I B L E and That's Jesus. That's the book for me. <laughs> and Jesus loves me. And um, those little songs are very faith building to a very small child. They're very simple concepts, and they just are. That's putting seed in them when you yeah. teach them those things. Um, we also put seed in our children by sowing the word. You know, in the parable of the sower, the, Jesus says, the seed is the word. And so we put the word in our kids. Right. We um, memorized scriptures together. Right. We acted them out together. We sang them together. Um, we, we did, did skits. <laughs> we did all kinds of ways. But we got the word into their hearts. Poster boards. <laughs> yep. That was great. That's right. We made all kinds of ways to memorize scripture and put the word inside of us. And the word says that if you... Um, put the word in your heart, then you won't sin against God. Yeah. And so that's producing good fruit then. And there's also a promise that we love. Um, it, it says that if you will train up a child in the way they will go, when they're older, they won't mm -hmm. depart from it. Yeah. So you're sowing seed with an expectation that your children will remain faithful to God. Right. Throughout their entire life, not just while they're under your roof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once they get on their own, doing their own thing, that they will remain faithful. So right. we're sowing seed with our time and our effort uh, into our children. Definitely. So that that we can hopefully, long term, mm -hmm. see a harvest. Now, we're yeah. going to tell you we're on the back side of that. And um, you never stop sowing seed. Let me just no. state that. But we are on the, on the back side where our children are all adults. And we're seeing the harvest of our efforts from, mm -hmm. you know, 25, 30 years ago. Right. And, and so that's kind of a fun place to be. So if you're a young family on here watching this or listening to this, we want to encourage you to do it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um, we're telling you this is not theory. This is something we put in practice. Yep. This is something that we personally have done. Mm -hmm. And we're reaping reward right. from believing God's word and sowing seed into our children and our family. Right. Um, and we believe that you can reap as big a reward, if not bigger than us, that if you'll do the same thing. Right. Yeah. 
And even as we're reaping a harvest with our adult children, mm -hmm. we are sowing seed into them again. I right. mean, we continually keep speaking the word and we keep learning new things together. Yep. And, you know, now that they're adults, we just we just keep learning together. We keep learning the um, we keep learning the precepts and the concepts of the word. And we listen to sermons together. We go to church together. We do the things together that need to be done for there to yep. be word sown into all of our hearts. Because learning never stops. Um, ever. Ever. Um, we live a learning lifestyle. Yeah. We are constantly learning. Constantly learning about God. Constantly learning about the, th the world around us. Constantly learning about the things he wants us to do. Sometimes he's giving us assignments and we're like, okay, we've got to learn something new again. <laughs> and, and so we just continuously do that. And we taught our children to continuously do that. Yeah. Uh, not leaving the spiritual yet because we also spent time with our kids um, doing devotional things. Yep. Um, we would read small devotionals with them when they were little because they could, didn't have a long attention span, but we would read something small. We'd talk about it. We'd discuss what God meant yeah. by it, you know, and then we would pray together. Um, we are a family that makes declarations from the word of God. So yeah. we would take scriptures that we wanted to be speaking over our family and we taught our kids how to declare them. And then we made it a, um, an interesting thing because we have a special needs child in our family. And so he would lead us uh -huh. and say a line of the scripture and then we would repeat. repeat or we would join in depending on where we were at in the scripture. And so we made it kind of a fun game, but we were still speaking the word, right. putting the word in and um, actually declaring over ourselves covering of the word um, an example would be like if you put on the armor of God. Mm -hmm. So um, our, chi our child, Matt, he would um, say, today we put on, and everyone would say, the armor of light, because it's also called the armor of light in Corinthians. And so we would say that, and then we would take each piece and we would physically put it on. So we'd wear our helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. We'd put on our breastplate of righteousness. We'd put on our belt of truth. We worked down. We picked up our shield of faith and stretched it wide across everything. And we picked up the sword of the spirit and cut ourselves free from everything that wasn't of God and his word. And having done all the stand, we would all stand, therefore. And so when they were little, it was a lot of fun because right. they were getting to act something out. And it wasn't boring. But they knew how to do each part, and they, you know, we would go through that every day. And it was um, a way to definitely sow seeds into their life yeah. of how God protects us and how he wants us to fight in the spirit, not in the flesh. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? No, I'm just, just going to say, and even with our adults, it's really fun to get them started on that because we start, and it's still in their head. Yeah. It's been trained. Yeah. And even though they're in their adulthood years, like, put on, and they're like, the armor of... You just yeah. can't help it. And it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, and, and so it, it is fun. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so you're doing serious work, but you're doing it in a way that is palatable. Yes. You're doing it in a way that they will receive it right. and enjoy it and actually uh, cement those thoughts mm -hmm. in, in, their, in their hearts. Right. Um, and so they won't lose those thoughts. They'll have those for the, for the lifetime. Right. Um, sewing spiritually looks different at different seasons. Right. Of, of life. So mm -hmm. what we just talked about was when they were really kind of young. Mm -hmm. And the scripture we gave them, we, we, we really didn't give them this one, but Jesus wept. You know, short, sweet, to the point. Right. Really simple little scriptures. Um, and as they aged, we would expand that. Mm -hmm. We would give them maybe two verses. And, you know, when they got even older, maybe a passage. A passage. Mm -hmm. Um, and or like I'll, the whole 23rd Psalm. Right. Or the whole Psalm 100, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. We tried to do all Psalm 119, no. but they, they, <laughs> they just kind of no. bucked at that. <laughs> but, but who wouldn't? Um, <laughs> That's a lot of verses. <laughs> for those of you that don't know what that means, Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the entire Bible. Right. So, And someone out there hasn't memorized, but it just wasn't us. We and it's not memorize. me. I'm... I'm I'm probably ashamed to say that, but I'm not. I know what it says. I just don't have it memorized. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not verbatim. Uh, anyway, back to topic. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's always different at different ages right. when you're sowing uh, seeds of any kind, right. uh, but spiritual seeds especially. 
Um, so you you want to make it age specific right. and age relevant. Yep. Um, and which makes it challenging. We have five children, so and there's a spread of about 13, 13 14 years mm -hmm. from top to bottom. Yep. Um, so you got a teenager up here, and then you got a, a little one down here, and then as they progress, you got a early twenties and a pre-adolescent mm -hmm. so you have to learn how to do it in such a way that they both are learning right and they're both getting what they need yeah. Yeah. um and so it becomes more challenging for you and for me and for as mm -hmm. parents but it's worth the effort right and um or you can just incorporate um as the children get older the older ones helping you teach the younger ones right there's yeah. multiple ways yeah. to approach that um, but we did you, that several times where we transitioned an older one into a teacher kind yeah. of role, and that helped. Then they felt more like they were being in charge, assist, assisting instead of just being using a, a young child um, technique for them. Yeah, so, and yeah. who wouldn't like to tell the brothers and sisters what, what to, to do? do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, who wouldn't? I don't care. They how... had to keep a good attitude. Well, they did. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying they did it no. wrongly. I'm just saying, who wouldn't like to do that? I don't right. care if you're Christian or not. No. Um, so anyway, the, you know. We want you to take time right. and sow these seeds. We want mm -hmm. you to take time. Uh, and sowing a seed takes time. It if you, does. If you watch a farmer, um, they get up early and they work late. And anymore, they work even into the dark because they got lights, lights now, yeah. on their tractors now. And so they work, you know, 16, 18, 20-hour days. So am I saying you need to work 20-hour days? You don't have to. can if you want. Um, but you should put effort and time into sowing seeds into mm -hmm. your, your children's mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. And the more effort you put, the better results you're going to get. Right. We also, um, spiritually, we, we taught our kids how to pray. Yep. Um, something that seems like should be really easy, but some children don't catch on real easy. Um, so we did work on prayer. We worked on hearing the Lord. Um, and so spiritual seeds also come in the form of learning to pray yeah absolutely learning to pray for others learning to pray for yourself um and so we and then we we also worked on listening for the lord yeah and hearing his voice and it was a um it was a, a real progression of having to learn how to yeah. do that we also prayed over our children so we would lay hands on our children and pray for them not every day, maybe, but we would do it on a regular basis so right. that they knew that there was um, uh, seeds of love being planted yeah. in them. We loved them enough to pray over them and take them to the throne room. And that was special to them. Um, there would sometimes be um, encouragement or words of prophecy that would come forth when we did that. And that also encouraged their hearts. And so seeds of encouragement and prayer and love, those are also important to put into your children. Um, when they're young and when they're getting older, especially yeah. um, in teenage years, sometimes it gets confusing. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I don't... <laughs> and so when they get in that season, they, they are needing to hear from the Lord. Yeah. It's important that they know how to hear him before they get there. And so, yeah, that's true. And, and when you teach them how to pray, uh, be ready because they'll probably blow you away and humble you um, yeah. because they'll come out there and mom, dad, can we pray for, can we pray about, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, yep, yeah, you're more mature than me. <laughs> you don't tell them that. No. But, but, but they just, I hadn't thought to play, pray for that yet. Yeah. They, they will think of things and pray for people, um, um, or pray for the world, or pray for things that they see or are concerned about yep. that you didn't even realize was in, inside of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of a cool moment yeah. uh, because that's, you're, you're getting, you're going to get these little harvests along the way mm -hmm. before you see a full harvest. Right. You're going to, you're going to see things sprouting, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, and growing. Yeah. And you're going to get these little mini harvests as you sow seed mm -hmm. spiritually. You're going to see your children, you know, there'll be a moment where they say, Hey, you know, what, what's this whole accept Jesus into my life thing? Right. That's a harvest. Yeah. You know, um, What's this whole water baptism thing? Mm -hmm. That's a harvest. Right. Now, what's this whole baptizing the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and speaking in tongues thing? Oh, that's a harvest. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to see all these different harvests that aren't the full harvest of mm -hmm. them, you know, ministering to, helping, growing, right. all the things that they're going to do in their life. Mm -hmm. But you're going to, so God has a way 
of just encouraging you with little yeah. you know victories along the way if you want mm -hmm. to use that term or a little harvest along yeah. the way um and so just keep doing um spending time sowing seed um spiritually yes into your children all right anything else spiritually well probably but that's good I okay think we, covered it we did well. that okay yeah all right so we want to in the, in the second half here of the podcast we want to talk about sowing seed in two different areas of your children's life um and we're going to put them in priority first one's working chores <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about playing as well uh, because you need to learn how to play and play right but we want to learn how to work yeah. um now what we're talking about here is not serving other people going to the church and doing things at the church or working a job what we're talking about is a work ethic right we're, we're, we're going to teach them how to do things ethic and skills as they grow and mm -hmm. learn and and give it we're not going to put them in harm's way we're not going to make them do things that we should be doing but we're going to bring them along our wrong side of us right. and we're going to help them you know leslie did such a good job of teaching kids how to um clean dishes how to do laundry how to cook meals um, to the point where, you know, because when we first got married, I enjoyed cooking a meal for Leslie and, and myself. And uh, I haven't been in the kitchen cooking a meal in decades yeah. um, <laughs> because she taught them so well, they kicked me out. Um, they have to be gone out of the house and I'll sneak down and make something for myself. It's like, oh, I can still make food. This is great. <laughs> but typically, even today, our children make almost all of our meals yeah. and um, and do that. Not because they have to, but because they like to. They like doing it. Yeah, they like uh, but they like Leslie taught them how to do that. She taught them how to do laundry. And who likes to do laundry? No one. But they learned how to do it and do it well. Um, they learned how to do dishes with and without a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. um, you know, dishwasher is always better, yep. in our opinion. Uh, and usually their names are Scott, Megan, Abby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> joking. Uh, but an actual dishwasher. But they know how to wash dishes. Yeah. Uh, they So it's, it's they've learned how to do work. They've learned how to pick up sticks in the yard. Mm -hmm. So we can mow the yard without, you know, breaking the mower. Mm -hmm. um, they've learned how to mow. paint. They learn how to and mow. And they learn how to mow. <laughs> um, they learn how to do all these different chores yeah. that we have to do on a regular basis the property that we live in and live on right now it's about three acres and we have this little timber so we constantly have trees that need to be trimmed we constantly have trees that need to be knocked down and cut up mm -hmm. and then burn yeah. um so the wood stacked or you know, all these things yeah. so we have to teach them how to do all of those things it's something it's just an ongoing process so um, how is that a sowing of seed into them oh that's a great question um and I, I can think of my oldest daughter we worked and worked and worked and taught her how to work and taught her how to um, have um, good work ethic and look around her mm -hmm. and be aware of what was needed not just do what you're told but do more be what we call an and then some christian mm -hmm. so you see the need you do it and then some Right. And so she learned how to do that. She learned it from her mom. She learned it from mm -hmm. her dad. Yep. She learned how to be an and then some Christian by her work ethic. So fast forward, she's at Bible school and she's working in what they call the Blue Jean Cafe at the, at the school she was going to. Uh, and she was out cleaning tables and getting it ready for the next shift of kids to come in and eat. And she would move chairs, move the table clean top bottom side she didn't have to be told how to clean a table or how to clean the floor mm -hmm. around the table mm -hmm. or around the chair yeah. she didn't do the least amount she did the most amount and the guy who was in charge I think it was a guy mm -hmm. the guy who was in yeah. charge was watching her mm -hmm. and he was amazed yeah. that she because most of these kids come in and do the least amount he had to show them everything step one right. step two and she came in and, and kind of like why don't you show them what to do? So that's how it pays off. Right. It yeah. shows off later when they have to do a job, mm -hmm. when they go to work for somebody, or they start yeah. a business. Or when they, they have their own family. When they have their own family. They have the discipline, mm -hmm. the ethics of working, yeah. the knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, our oldest daughter has four kids now, and she's now teaching them how to, to do, do chores. Do chores, yeah. You know, she's got, a, they're younger, um, and so she just this year has started a 
chore jar, chore mm -hmm. chart, something to do it's with chores. Right I'm not sure how she's doing. She does it a little differently than we did, but it's okay. She's like, you know what? My mom taught me this. Maybe I can teach my kids. <laughs> Get a little pressure off of here. And so she had begun to do that, which is really, really cool to see it generationally mm -hmm. yeah. passed down. So you're teaching work ethic that would be passed down generation, generationally. Um, my youngest daughter, she's not even 20 yet. She'll be 20 this year, but she's not even 20 yet. And where she works at, she she works at a, 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 a retail food place. food place. And they, at 19, give her more things to do than do the adults around her. Because she has a better work ethic. She's like bossing people older than her. Because they're like, she'll get it done. She knows what to do. And, and they, like, it, and by the way... She loves it because from the time she was born, she wanted to be in charge. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> her getting to be in charge is, she didn't lord it over people, but she just yeah. does really good work. And because she does the good work, her and she shows others how to do it. The employer's like, well, you show them how to do this. Why don't you show them how to do that? Why don't you teach them how to do this? And so they actually have her come in. They keep her because they, the bosses leave and have her close. She's yeah. not even a manager. Mm -hmm. And they have her close their business. They trust her. Because of the work ethic that we taught her. Mm -hmm. My oldest son, um, he got all sorts of, he worked at Chick-fil-A. Now he works at a different place. He worked there for five, six years. And then he's worked, you know, uh, um, he worked that. Now he's working in a, a grocery store mm -hmm. kind of place. And, and so he got accolades constantly from the owners of, of his franchise that he worked for. And so he was always getting promoted, and, and he, people loved him because he wasn't being a suck up. He wasn't doing all that kind of stuff. You were you working just to you know make yourself look good in front of the boss. He worked good and hard all the time. Mm -hmm. And one of my fondest memories of teaching Scott how to do work was first time I taught him how to use a chainsaw, and I showed him how to start it, <laughs> showed him how to work it, and I said, "I'm going to mow the yard. I'm going. I'll be over here. I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to watch you. But you know, this is what I want you to do. How you want, want you to do it." And it was so funny because he, he fired that thing up and the first tree, he had a couple of trees that had fallen and he's cutting them up into, you know, three, four foot uh, logs that we can burn. And he hit that first one and he went, eh, and he, eh. he cut all the way through and he got done. He's like, oh, you could hear him <laughs> over my mowing, over headsets on. I could hear him go, oh, the power. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they they grab on to these things. Yeah. So it's not, you know, we use the word chore. It's true, but it's not a chore. It's it's a joy to work. Yeah. And it's and, a joy and to have good work ethic. I always taught the kids, too, that as they were doing the chores, they were doing the work in the house, it was to benefit our family. Yes. They were blessing our family by being part of the work um, crew that was keeping our family moving along. Um, they're dusting a table or vacuuming a floor yeah. or, um, you know, washing a dish. Whatever they were doing yeah. was contributing to our family and it had value. Yeah. And they had value doing it. Yeah. And so it was a good time to, to sow those seeds of um, respect and, and self-esteem yeah. into them Absolutely. too. And so that was a good thing. Yeah, and I'm going to say right now, some employer or so, some business partner, uh, some church, some place that they're going to do and work and serve at is going to thank you. Yeah. For teaching them how to do that. Yep. All right, let's move on to the last one because it's it's a fun one. Uh, won't you just jump in? And, and, okay. And, and so start. you should sow seeds into your kids when you play. What? You know, it seems like it's. I'm not trying to take the fun out of it. You should have fun. Everything you do should be fun. But when they're little, you sow seeds of your time into them. You play. Um, I think of um, when Brian and I were young in our marriage, and we had two little girls and they waited and waited for daddy to come home from work and they were not satisfied with daddy coming home from work until he set his things down turned around and rolled around on the floor with them and wrestled around and hugged them and kissed them and played with them and poured himself into them and that play time was really important it was seed sown into their little hearts that yeah. he loved them daddy loved them and missed them when he was gone yeah it was really, really important time for them. Um, when our kids started getting bigger, when our children were growing, then we would have uh, impromptu playtime, which is very important. Yeah. But we also scheduled playtime. 
we would have a day that we said, okay, this is not going to be a school day today. We're going to take day off and we're going to go and do something fun. And we would put um, ourselves on hold and put time into our kids. And it would be something fun. Go to the zoo, walk around a park, go to the mm -hmm. mall, and you know, get ice cream, whatever we were going to do. But it would be something fun and something we could do together. Right. And we were giving of our time into their lives, sowing those seeds of relationship in them. Um, sometimes we would schedule like um, game nights. Sometimes we would mm -hmm. have a, a night where we were going to play um, like uh, structured games, you know, like on a board. Or sometimes we would play charades. Um, and then other times play came like when we were not expecting it, like when the lights went out one night. And um, so we were sitting around waiting when the lights come back on. So our kids decided that they should... Um, just start quoting a Veggie Tale movie. They did the whole yeah, and, movie. Songs, um, sound effects, everything. Everything. And they could do that though, because um, our our son Matthew, um, who was special needs, he had the show memorized, and so they would do it so that they could do it with him. Right. And then they would all play the game of quoting the movie, and they'd right. all pick a character and be a character, and it was hilarious. But, you know, sometimes impromptu fun mm -hmm. is also sowing seeds. They were sowing seeds into their brother at that point. They were. Which is really awesome. So they, they took the lesson we had taught them about sowing time and fun into them, and then they used it um, to bless their brother, Yeah, which was really fun. Yeah, and the and, and way Leslie started us off in this particular section, what we're talking about here with, you know, uh, Life is serious enough yeah. that we need to take moments mm -hmm. to bring some levity, yep. some fun, some laughter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I do bad jokes. Yep. Really bad jokes. Known for his jokes. Really, really, bad really jokes. bad dad jokes. Yeah. If you want some, email me at <laughs> fatherfamilyministries at gmail.com and I'll send you bad jokes. It'll be great. <laughs> She's laughing because she knows I'll do it. <laughs> um, oh, I love it. Matter of fact, I have trained others to do bad jokes and... I've got different ones. I had a, a, a dear, dear relative who is very not jokey. He's he's just not a joking person. And all of a sudden, he starts sending dad jokes. And my wife's like, "You've corrupted him!" <laughs> like, yes, another convert. So, gotta have fun. Yes. And, and so you gotta make ways to enjoy life, even in the middle of a struggle. Yeah. Even in the midst of. Of, of things not going right, even if if the finances aren't there, if the health isn't there, mm -hmm. if they're struggling with relationships, if they're struggling with whatever, you know, the world looks like it's going to hell in a handbasket. Whatever's going on, if you focus on all that so hard, mm -hmm. you'll get you get depressed, you'll get anxiety, you'll have all these things that'll come upon you because as a man thinks in his heart so is he yes and so you got to learn to let that go mm -hmm. you know the bible says to cast your care upon him mm -hmm. who cares for you yeah and and so you have to cast your care one of the ways of doing that is just letting it go and having a, a having a, some fun just yeah. having you know Laughter. play some cards play a board game yeah. go outside and roll in the mud i don't know <laughs> uh but go do something that's not Leslie's form of fun. Go for a walk. You could do that. For Go walk, for a walk. Likes. Go for a hike. Um, but but whatever, whatever it works for you and your family. Yeah. But you you take the time to make an enjoyable moment. You know, it's a really big thing right now. Everybody's making memories, um, and and that's fine. That's not what life is about. It's not what parenting is about. It's not what raising a family is about. Um, we have found out that memories take care of themselves. They happen in moments when you don't think about creating a memory. Mm -hmm. um, they're not fabricated. They just naturally mm -hmm. occur. And some of those moments came when we're teaching them how to brag. Some of those moments came when we were teaching them to memorize scripture. Some of those moments came when, you know, the memory of Scott with the chainsaw. It's a moment. It's, it's, a, it's a memory. Um, for him and me, you know, yeah. um, that we have moments where we did other things where, uh, those things became memories for our family, but they're by that memory is a byproduct of us sowing seed in different ways, right. you know, spiritually through work, through play, and so just keep doing that, yeah. and and watch what God does with you, for you, and through you with your family. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh, that was really good. Good summation, dear. Woo! <laughs> we landed the plane. <laughs>
We never land the plane. <laughs> At least I don't. I'm a pastor. Okay, that was our first close. No, I will close no. again just for you. <laughs> Having a moment. Hey, I'm taking this play thing seriously today. Mm. Um, so thank you. Thank you for being with us today. I think we're done, right? Okay, she says we're done. Thank you for being with us. Um, if you haven't heard, uh, my wife's book has been published. The Family Manual uh, launch date is March 10th, just around the corner, uh, just a few days away. And so please go to theunbreakablefamily.com. The first 100 people who order the book from theunbreakablefamily.com will get this lovely lady to sign it. She's so excited that I put that out there for her. Um, so she will sign for the first 100 people. And we have a lot of those already gone. So time's short and that number is getting smaller. So please jump out there, grab the book, go to theunbreakablefamily.com. You'll see it highlighted on our homepage. There'll be a link to go buy it. Go purchase the book from my newly published author wife, Leslie Fathery. Uh, it'll bless you. It's a book about raising a family from start to finish. It's from a, it, it's every season of life that, that is affected by you and family. And it's a very, it's, the subtitle is A Practical Guide to Raising a Christian Family. And it is. It's a very practical guide to take, and it's not things that she's learned through books, though she's read books. It's not things she's learned by going to seminars, though she's done that. It's things she's learned through experience, through prayer, insight, and revelation that God has given her. So I'm not even apologizing for this blatant uh, <laughs> promotion of the book because it's well worth getting and it's well worth keeping. I personally feel it's going to be a family heirloom for many families that will help you get through different stages of life and give you ideas, thoughts, even even if it's a pump, you know, uh, a, what they call prime the pump. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just a prime the pump thing to help you get good ideas to finish and do things for your family. I believe that's what it'll do for you. So, again, the unbreakablefamily.com, the family manual, get the book. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for checking us out on YouTube. Thank you for all the things for supporting us and being around with us. We've got other things coming up here pretty soon that we'll be announcing um, that we're going to be doing. And so we're looking forward to letting you know all those things. How's that for a little bait for you? Um, and, and so I'm landing the plane. I really am. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> she's squeezing my hand right now. Like, get it done. She's tired of hearing me talk about her. Um, so thank you again. And we look forward to talking to you and visiting with you on the next podcast. Yes. The Unbreakable Podcast. We're praying for you and your family. We're believing for big things this year, for God mm -hmm. to do great things in your yes. life. So look forward to God's blessing and favor to be on your life this year as you pursue him. Yeah. Amen. And with that said, we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>